Hey guys, it's Steve on the Guru Brew. This is part three of our continuing series on using a CAD CAM for beginners. This is 101. If you missed our other two classes that came before this, you can watch one here. Or here. And catch up on things before you watch this one. Today we're going to be talking about getting on the computer with the parts that we've made in the previous classes and begin to tell our router machine how we want the parts cut and what size and thickness of the wood that we're using as well as the uh, type of bit that we're going to be using. So if you guys are game, arcade game that is, let's get started. Okay, since last time, you'd seen me draw this arcade cabinet, and I've gone through here since then and started to touch things up, tidy things up, and make sure that everything is the way I wanted it before I actually go ahead and start making the part. Let me show you a little bit more than I did last time, and then we'll catch up on the uh, master cam. We've decided to go ahead with a two-player console on this. Now, we don't have our buttons yet, so we just took a rough idea from the catalog that we ordered the buttons from and popped some holes in here. Um, we will wait on this part, at the top console part, until our parts do come, and then we'll put some acre holes. This is just for aesthetics right now to give us a, a look at it. We've put some vent holes in the side, and um, I decided to put the power supply over to the side. And I want to show you how I actually grooved the wood parts to accept the other cross pieces. And you can see right here how this is grooved down, um, a quarter inch down, and then a half inch wide plus to accept these cross pieces. And all the construction is done in the same manner. And the reason why I like to go ahead and do this grooving method is because I can clamp this piece together with glue and not worry about external nails or fasteners of any kind. Let me pull the side of this off so you can get an idea of all the other parts. I'm going to just go ahead and uh, right click on this and hide this side for just a moment. And you can actually see how this wood is just stacked together in such a way to make this shape around the perimeter. And the reason why I like to take these parts off, let me hide this one too, is to make sure that they're stacked properly. And you can see I haven't done any special angled cuts to these boards at all. They're just boards that are stacked in a particular order. But with that groove that's going on on the side, I'm able to do this. So you can get a look at it there. Let's go ahead and put this back together real quick. So this is the main cabinet. Now there's one other feature I wanted to show you. If you look under here, you can notice that this bridges up and then these sides don't at all. The reason why we did that is we wanted to put a light behind here. Uh, we have a blue light. It's a uh, kind of like a rope light type thing. And we thought it would be neat if we hit it under here and then if this was on at night, it would glow and give us some ground effects, if you will, on the counter of a blue down here that's glowing. And it's just one thing that kind of helps dress it up a little bit. We are using full-size joysticks and buttons on this one. So now that we have our part drawn, you know, I could keep poking at this and it's easy to not leave it alone and keep changing things. But at some point, you just have to say enough's enough. Usually, uh, honestly, you will have problems um, when you go to put this thing together, no matter how hard you try at first, because it's just unforeseen things happen. But usually they're small, minor things that can be corrected with hand tools, that sort of thing. But uh, you know, you just have to pick a point and say enough's enough, and I'm gonna build this thing. And then that's the nice thing about CAD, if you, if you make a mistake, you can redraw the part or fix it and then just come back and cut it later. So, you know, CAD, really, CAD CAM, rather, is more purposed for making more than one part. 
Um, most of these parts could be cut faster on a table saw than using a CNC machine. However, you're not going to get the detail on the grooves like we have with this one. Um, let me open this side part. Now, to make something like this freehand on a table saw and you know, using a router and traditional parts wouldn't be that easy and this would take you a, a really long time to, to, to try to make this. So this part would pay off, but the top boards and the back boards, they're just square in dimension. That would probably be faster just to do it on conventional equipment. So the next step is to take our parts one by one and import them into another computer program. And that computer program that I'm using is called Master Cam. Here is a picture of it here. This is the actual program. And I've brought a side panel. This is uh, the right side panel. You're looking at the grooves here. Into the program and begin working on it. And what this program allows you to do is to define what types of tools, router bits rather, like this one. Here's another one that's a little bit smaller. This is a quarter inch and this is an eighth inch. I'm going to be using a quarter inch for everything, this upcut bit, you can see here. And we're going to be cutting it in three quarter, or I'm sorry, half inch um, MDF board, which is here. So generally, what you'd like to do is do it in steps. Now, these little holes for breathing on the side, you can see are here. And this defines how the holes will be cut. Now, let me click on this button here. And this gives us a reference of how the tool is going to come across here and cut the holes in order and it simulates that for us before we actually cut actual wood. So this will be the actual path that the tool takes as well as the depth and, and all the other parameters that we've defined. So if you delve into here a little bit deeper, now I'm not going to go into a whole lot how to set master cam up because there are other um, cam packages out there. This is just one of them. But uh, I'll give you a, a preview of it. If I click on here, it asks me what kind of bit I have. Now there's a whole library full of bits. You can see that there's straight bits and fluted bits and just bits of all kinds. Plus, you can um, make your own. So if I went to the store and purchased this special bit for plywood, I could actually define that bit and put it in my, my tool selection and then call it later, and my router would know which bit I was changing to. So you can see that I'm, I'm picking my own bits here, and you can see that I've defined how fast I want my machine to go with this particular bit and how fast I want it to plunge into the material. If you look under this um, tab, you can see how deep I want to take the holes, which is a half inch here. Now, this material is exactly a half inch, so if I was to put a router bit into this, a half inch, there might be a little onion skin on the back that doesn't break out. And that's what this button here is. It's called breakthrough, and I've allowed .08 past my half inch, so it actually completely goes all the way through because this isn't a perfect thickness of course. So that's what breakthrough does. And the depth cuts here, I'm taking the bit down 0.08 each time. So I'm having to cut this in multiple passes and the reason why I do that is so I don't put a lot of stress on my bit. If I was to come in here with my bit and just start ripping it and roaring all the way through in one pass, this would cause a lot of stress. But if I just take it down a little bit, cut, go back, put it down a little more, go back. Taking little nibbles at it is a lot better on the machine and a lot better on your tools. So all these parameters are defined in this master cam settings here. And there are many, 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 many settings inside here. And really, um, the better the cam package is, the more features you're going to get. <clears throat> um, let's look at the next thing that I've done. This is the pocket, and if I click on this button, I can get a preview of the pocket. And that is the area around the perimeter that the other pieces will fit into eventually. 
and you can see that I'm going over and over it, not in big chunks, but in one small increments until the job's done um, to relieve stress on the bit and the machine. And then there's one more thing, and that is to cut the part out. Now if I click on this, you can see actually the layers of how this is um, going down a little bit more. And each one of these layers is another pass. And this can all be changed by myself. This is just parameters that I like to use. I don't like to stress my machine out a lot. That might be a little bit too much for somebody or not enough for others. It just depends on your machine and how you like it to run. You know how fast you want to push material through it. And uh, I'm not a high production place here, so I just like to take it slow and easy. So I set my machine up for that. When you're all done uh, defining all these things, um, let me show you this real quick. This is the stock setup. In here, I tell it what size my stock is. In this case, it's 20 by 20 inches by half inch. And then I tell it what corner I'd like to call zero, which is here. That's my reference point, they call it. Anyway, um, once I have my stock and everything set up and I put all my tool paths into these libraries, I can go ahead and click on this button and preview what it's going to look like um, to give me an idea if I like what I see. And you can see it's popping the holes in. And now it's doing that uh, little lip for the other board and then it's cutting the, the piece out in the end. And I'll keep this there. So there it is. There's the side of it and I can zoom in and examine it and see if it's what I wanted. And it, it's not perfect, but it gives me an idea of what I'm dealing with. And, and uh, if there's an error, I'll see it right away because, you know, the bit will cut into it wrong or something like that. But uh, that's what the cam package does, in my case called Master Cam. Now, like I said, there are other CAD, um, cam packages. Now, some uh, CAD CAM packages are two packages in one. It allows you to draw the part as well as to write the machine code. In my case, I'm using SolidWorks, which is a CAD, and then this is Master Cam, which is the CAM. So these are two separate packages, but there are other packages out there. Uh, Vetrix is one of them. If you look at Vetrix.com, they have very affordable packages that include CAD and CAM in one package. It's more for the um, enthusiast rather than the professional, but their products are very good and easy to use too. Okay, so that's how we make the part in Mastercam. And we can also nest parts together. And what I mean by nest is, if you look at this red line, this shows how big my board is gonna be, which is uh, 20 inches square. And I have a little bit of room here and a little bit of room here. Now, what I can do is continue to make parts, and then if I have any small parts left over, I can bring them in and fill in these areas so I'm not wasting my wood. Now, in my case, I'm not going to save this wood because I'd rather have all my parts on one sheet. So I'm gonna cut this part, and then I'm gonna make the other side and cut that part, and then begin doing my braces. So that is, in a nutshell, of how you, um, make the g-code. Now the very last part of the process is, once I'm happy with the way this looks, is I just hit this button here and this will create the actual g-code. Now it looks um, like a bunch of numbers and I'll show that to you. Okay, so this is actual G-code, and you notice that they're line numbered, and the way that the CAD machine works is it works line for line for line for line, kind of like a basic computer program, if you will. It starts at the top with the, the earliest numbers and then goes all the way through. And you can see that this is hundreds, if not thousands of lines long to cut this one part out. Now we really don't have to cons uh, concern ourselves with these numbers or what they mean. 
A basic understanding of these numbers is useful but not needed. Um, GO is a command, uh, G1, G3, these are all things that you can look up, they all mean different things. And then the Z is the access, uh, Y is an access, as well as X. And then the number after it tells it what position would be for that particular uh, access. So like here, we have Z, 0.2486. So it's asking the router machine to move this up and down Z access to 0.248 is what that line means there. So this is the G code. So what we do with this code is we actually put it in another computer. We have the computer that the actual CNC machine runs on. And that's an, one more program that runs the machine, and does everything that we need it to do. We're going to go over there next week. I'm not going to do it today. But uh, that's when we actually put our wood on and start cutting it. And I'll show that to you then. But this is the last step here in the office as far as the computers are concerned. And we'll move this code over, this G code, and begin to cut our parts. So I hope you guys learned something in this class. It's kind of a short class, but uh, there's not much to be said about doing G code. I haven't really showed you how to use the program, but to be honest with you, it's a little complicated for a first time. So it's best to just watch some other videos in this and get familiar with what's going on, then you'll understand the process. So we'll see you next time. We'll see you next week. We're going to be at the router machine. I'm going to go over the parts with you. We're going to load our G code in. Hopefully we'll get cut apart. And then the following episode, we'll actually put the thing together. That's going to be really exciting. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks to all the new subscribers and all the like. You know, we're really growing fast, and it's really a good feeling to know that people are enjoying the videos that we take the time to make. Because, to be honest with you, these videos do take some time out of our day, and uh, it's just nice to know that, that people appreciate them and watch them. So give us a comment to know that you're out there. We uh, like reading them and appreciate them. Take care of yourself, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.